Hey everyone, if you're looking for a Soapmaker 3 tutorial, I hope to help you with that. My name is Tammy, I'm the owner of Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. I have been on Soapmaker for about three and a half years now, and I feel like I have a fairly decent grasp of how to use the program. Now, I am by no means saying I am an expert. I don't know everything and I still learn a lot. Your best source of information is gonna be that Facebook group, but to get you started, to help you, I just thought I would go and, and show you my software, show you my program and, and how I use it. And if that helps you, then I'm tickled. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you have anything that I missed or, or a better way of doing something, feel free to leave that in the comments too. Uh, I Like I said, I still learn all the time. I learn all the time from the Facebook group, so. Definitely join and be active in that. You'll learn a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you like this sort of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Share on your social media so other people can find it. And subscribe. I will hope to do everything I can to help you. And if you have anything in particular you need to know, let me know. And I will do what I can to uh, bring a, a video to you for that. So let's get on with the videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the other side. Okay, we are back with the probably one of the most daunting tasks in soap maker is inputting all of your ingredients, and it's it's a task. So this is this is how I did it. There are a hundred ways of doing it. There is no right or wrong way of doing it. It just depends on on your situation and what's important to you. So the very first thing you do is input all your ingredients that you have in stock. And so what I mean by that is, say you bought something in 2016, or in my case it was 2016, maybe I bought something the year prior and I still had some of that left. I would add that into a purchase order or a record a new purchase in soap maker. If I bought five things on that purchase, on that invoice, and I only have three of those still in stock, I'm not gonna add all five things into soap maker. For one thing, I may never use those again, and um, it really had no bearing on taxes or anything like that. Um, what it has a bearing on is your cost. Like when you, when you see in a recipe, it'll tell you your uh what what that each individual item cost you to make it'll give you your recipe volume what the whole recipe costs but i tend to look at each item cost so every bar of soap it would cost you know a dollar for me to make that so that's where this comes into play so what i did i tend to ramble so i'm going to try to be concise <laughs> What I did was I went back and I went through 2015 and 2016 invoices because I started in 2017. Um, and I added that ingredient into soap maker at what I paid for it. I didn't include shipping and handling and I didn't include taxes. I just wanted to make it as easy on me as possible. What I ended up doing though is because I wanted to keep it quite um, clear to me that that ingredient was purchased prior to me getting Soap Maker 3. So I just gave it a, a dummy date and I said June 1st, 2016, that's when that was purchased in Soap Maker. That told me that that ingredient cost may have been a little bit skewed because of there were no taxes or, or insurance added or shipping and handling added to that ingredient. So that's how I did it. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is decide on your categories of ingredients. So I'll show you what I mean. So if you come up to um, my supplies, supplies right here in, in the left. First your base oils, these are all your base oils. You can see that I have several oils here in my, in my list. I have created an organic field because I do have um, coconut oil that's organic and I have coconut oil that's not organic. If you're seeing an oil 
or if you're not seeing an oil that you use, you can click on this more oils. And these are all the oils that are in Soapmaker 3 that you can choose from. That's, that's kind of like their uh, set values already in there for you. You can uncheck something that you don't use. So I don't use shortening, so I don't have that checked. That way, only the things that you actually see are what you would ever use. So you can come through here, uncheck the things that you'll never use. I won't say never, but as a routine, you're not gonna use it. I've come in here and unchecked and checked several times, so not a problem to, to do this differently. But you wanna make sure that the oils that you have in stock are definitely checked. And just to make your life easier, you may go ahead and uncheck some things that you know you'll never use. And so your additives. This is where your categories are gonna come in handy before you start inputting your um, ingredients, okay, or those invoices. So I have a lot of categories, um, and I have, through the years, just kept adding more and more categories. But I think your main ones are gonna be like your essential oils, your fragrance oils, um, any sort of botanicals you may have. I have a lot of categories. Um, some, I'm sure there's people that have a lot more than I do. To put a new category in is pretty easy. Just add new category and give it a name. I, it does have a 10 character minimum I, or maximum. I wish it had a longer, longer field for that. Um, but just shorten it up if you need to and put abbreviations if you need to. But enter, enter any category you think you're going to use right away. Add all your categories, even if it's just like I did in the beginning, you have bath bomb, you have lotion, you have soap, fragrance oils, whatever, colors, um, those categories. Um, just make sure those are in there. We're just gonna leave this because this is gonna come later. Um, I guess you could probably go ahead and do your packaging as well. So if you have jars, uh, I have bottles, boxes, candle container. So anything in packaging, go ahead and add those categories too while we're here. All right, we're gonna leave this for now because really all we need to do at this point is enter your ingredients. To enter in those invoices, have those invoices in front of you, uh, click on supplies, and you're gonna record a new purchase. So this, I'm just gonna show you kind of how I did it back when I first started. So you have a supplier and you can add a new supplier here at the bottom. So let's just say Brambleberry. I would put my dummy date in here. So let me put like 2016, I did June and I did 01. Just a dummy date for me. You don't have to do that. You can actually put the date purchased if you want. That's 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 up to you. I was just trying to make it as, as little overwhelming as I possibly could. So, um, we're not going to do other expenses, so we'll talk about other expenses in another video, but you're not going to include any bowls or utensils or anything that you're not selling in this because you've already um, accounted for those on taxes, so I, I wouldn't add any of that stuff. So if, if you have you know a spatula on an order, don't include it. Um, that's just... We're gonna just do your ingredients and packaging. So now that we have those categories, we can choose, okay, so a base oil. So let's say I ordered um, argan oil from Brambleberry. So here's, here's my, my big takeaway, big recommendation on, on entering oils, is decide how you're gonna weigh your ingredients every year. So I would imagine that you're doing like an end of the year inventory where you're kind of weighing out what you have in stock and doing adjustments in the system. Um, I ran into a problem where I bought from Soper's Choice, I bought like their seven, seven pound jug of safflower oil. So I entered in that I, that I purchased one seven pound safflower oil and what I paid for it. I would recommend that if you're weighing, if you're gonna be weighing these at all 
to do an inventory that you convert that seven pounds into ounces. It's gonna save you in the long run when you're trying to adjust those because it's gonna tell you that you have two pounds and 16 ounces left and you're having to think through the math and how many ounces is two pounds and 16 ounces. Or, well, that's three pounds. <laughs> you know what I mean. So I always have, have since then, I have converted any like 10 pound shea butters. I, I What is that, 800 ounces? I don't know, 100, I don't know. Math is not my thing. So I, I Google helps me come up with how many ounces is in that. And that's what I put in as my purchase price. Another thing that I didn't do at the beginning that I have started doing is say I ordered um, or bought five, uh, let's make it easy, three 16 ounce jugs or bottles of argan oil. So I would do one, just to make it easy, I ordered, you know, 32, 48 ounces, and you put your ounces in here um, of, so you can do grams, all of these different things. You have your little drop down here. But say I ordered, three but I ended up I put it in as one and then your price container let's say it was fifteen dollars and you had to enter so that is now in here but it would make it a lot easier on my inventory when I'm doing that inventory to come back up here and change this to three sixteen um, my recommendation is also to actually put how many containers instead of just combining them all on one. Um, so there you go. So let's say you went and you made a change, but you can't you can't do any. How are you gonna? It's come up here, enter a new item. We'll clear that out and let you enter a new item, and then you're good to go for the next one. Okay, it's it's not in there. You have never entered this. Um, ingredient before so you can say let's see whatever what, let's just do test ingredient and if you tab it's gonna say oh this is unknown would you like to define a new name and you can say yes and you tell it what category you want it in you can click your new category here too which I I don't think I knew that um, you can give it a name and then specific gravity Honestly, I'm not gonna go over specific gravity. I never, ever, 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 ever use it because I weigh every single thing. So I just leave it whatever it wants to give it to me at. I, I don't, you know, I don't do anything with specific gravity. So that's gonna be someone else to help you with that one. Um, you can give notes to it. You can give it an inky name and then you just hit okay. And then you have entered a specific gravity that's heavier than lead. <laughs> All right, well, let's just go with one. Okay, so then you can give it a lot number, you can give it an expiration date, you can say 116 ounces, I'm just doing that on my tab. Um, I paid $5 for that, and you hit enter. So that, is, that completes my Brambleberry order from you know 2016. Again, I really didn't include shipping, I didn't include tax, back then I was paying taxes, um, I know I started in 2017. In 2017, I pretty much did add every single receipt or invoice that I had because I was gonna use that for taxes. So 2017, I used, I entered all of those. So let's say it is 2017 or 2020, 2021, I guess, right? Uh, okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, I had to take a little break and then I forgot to plug in my microphone and twice, this is my third time doing this section because I keep forgetting to plug in my microphone. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. All right, let's go through this year's invoices and receipts. If you are inputting, especially if you're using this for taxes, like I do, I do use this for my taxes. So when I first started, I took every single invoice and receipt from the current year and put that in here. Uh, whether I had stock left or not, regardless, I paid for it this year, I'm putting it in. So I'm gonna go up to supplies and I'm gonna hit record new purchase. And again, this is for this year. I'm moving this over just a little bit. We're gonna just do a couple fake invoices real quick. So let's say in January from Amazon, Maybe I ordered some, 
let's do a base oil. And I needed it within just a couple of days. I needed it fast. And so sometimes in a pinch, I'll do that. So let's say I ordered one 16 ounce bottle of almond oil um, and I paid, you know, 12 bucks for it. Hit enter. I'm gonna change my date to January 1. That's when I ordered it. That's when I did all of these orders was January 1. Um, let's see, other expenses? Probably, let's see, maybe a mold. So I have an, an other expensive tools. And so I'm gonna say, okay, mold. And this was, you know, silicone heart mold. mold. And I paid $8 for that. Hit enter. And so there you go. That's January. That's that, that receipt. It's done. I can add that. Um, I probably had free shipping. <laughs> but maybe I paid $2 in shipping. Maybe I paid 75 cents in tax. I just throwing numbers out here. So what I want to do is make sure that this 2275 matches my receipt from January. Everything looks good. And then I hit save and close. Or you can hit save and new and go on to the next um, receipt in your folder, binder, whatever. Let's say you're going through and entering in um, some fragrance oils that you purchased. So let's do maybe Flaming Candle. And I purchased this on today, January 4th. So I have my, my uh, categories here and um, let's do candles. So I have fragrance oil and I have fragrance oil candles. And so that tells me, I put, I put the fragrance oil in the candle one if I know I'm not using it for Bath & Body, I have no intention to use it for Bath & Body, but more importantly, if it's not safe for Bath & Body, I'll put it in this uh, category. And so also what I do is you'll notice that I have all of my fragrance oils listed with the company name or the uh, supplier name that I purchased them from. So this is Candle Science. Um, let's scroll down. I have Flaming Candle here. Uh, nature's Garden, I have some Nurture Soap, Rustic Essentials, Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, that is very helpful. Someone, when I first started Soap Maker and on the Facebook, Facebook group, had mentioned that they do this, and I loved that idea, and I'm so thankful that I read that post, because it really does help. I probably have purchased four or five peppermints from all these different suppliers, and in my uh, recipe for that, you know, soap or wax melt or whatever I'm making, I at a glance can know what I'm using, who used it, and whether I liked it or not. Um, so I really, really appreciate that tip from that person. So let's say we we're doing balsam fir. You can put the lot number, you can put an expiration date. Um, one, maybe I just ordered an eight ounce, eight ounce, and then I paid $11 for that. Hit enter. Um, maybe let's go back and I don't know if they have. Let's just do. Let's pretend. I don't think they have colors, but let's do color. Here's where I put all my micas. And again, I use my my little codes: brambleberry, um, micas, and more. Uh, nurture. So I have all of these different micas. And I'm just going to choose TKB because I don't, I've never purchased flaming candle uh, colorants. I don't know that they have any, but we'll pretend. And maybe I just hit one, one, and then I'm going to do ounce. You can scroll down or hit your keys. Oops. Um, maybe I was just $5 for that one. Okay. Maybe in this, I also ordered a mold. So let's go down. To, I have a category of tools. That's where all of this kind of stuff goes. My, my spatulas or spoons or molds or anything like that. So I'm gonna do a mold and maybe I'll just be specific and I'll say a six cavity. And let's see, how much did we pay for that mold? Let's just do $10. Hit enter. And so th this 
this is done for this year. So I would put my shipping, I would put any taxes, I would input all of that because that's going on my uh, taxes for the you know for for this year or when I submit them for next year. And you can either hit save and close or hit save and new, and that'll bring you up a new your your next blank supply purchase order form, and you can go on to the next receipt. Purchase. Uh, packaging down is so when your your categories are your oils your waters and then it comes into your all of your additives and then at the bottom you get all of your packaging so let's say I ordered jars jars and let's say I ordered six ounce clear jars I ordered one container of 200 jars and I paid $800 for the jar or for the container. So this will tell you that you paid 40 cents per item. Well, let's add shipping. I paid $25 in shipping because that's it was expensive. And maybe back in the day I paid tax. So maybe I paid, you know, four dollars in tax. I don't know. So I paid $109. Well, if you remember in the first video, we talked about that box that says, do you want to share the overhead cost across the across the whole um, purchase order? Instead of the 40 cents an item, now it becomes 55 cents an item because of the shipping and tax that we paid, okay? Um, again, I really didn't mess with shipping or taxes in the prior to the year that I got soap maker, I didn't mess with that. But year of, absolutely, I added shipping and tax because it really will affect the cost of each individual item you're, you're making. When we go to input those recipes, you're gonna see how much that, that each item costs you. And it costs 15 cents more per item than if you didn't add the shipping and, and taxes to, to go over um, the whole purchase order. Uh, there are pros and cons to that, pros and cons to doing it that or just using it as a as basically an, a write-off expense later. Um, it's a write-off expense either way, it's just um, how, how you want to set up your program. Another thing while we're doing this, and I'm just going to close this out, while we're doing this, um, it's not really about your ingredients, but while you have these receipts out and while you're inputting all your purchases for the year of your current year, I would go ahead and add in any uh, business expenses as well. And just get those out of the way because like I said, there's no reason for you to go grab your receipts again if they're in front of you. So let's let's just do real quickly a couple business expenses. So I'm gonna go back up to supplies and record new purchase. Let me move this over just a little bit. All right, so let's say um, January 1. So I'm gonna change the date, January 1. That's when my bank fees come out. So I'm gonna hit other expenses. I actually have a category called bank fees. So I would put bank fees January. And the reason I do the month, even though it's on that month, it's, I mean, I have the date of January 1. When I'm looking at my uh, list of purchases, I can easily see that I've captured every single month. It just makes it easier for me. So $8 on bank fees. And I also uh, am Swift, Swift Crack Monkey. It's a blog. It's a dollar a month for me to have access to those some of those blog posts. So I would put that under education and I would do Swift, oops, craft monkey, and then, or point of interest. I'm, I think I actually call it something different all the time. Um, and then January, and then that's just a dollar and hit enter. Um, let's say my, uh, craft shows okay so I had craft shows in say say I did something in May of this year and I want to I want to show that so I would do master gardener craft show 
and I paid $35 for it and hit enter. And that's where I would put my craft shows. Um, insurance, I have a business expense. And then I would do, just do yearly insurance and that's 300, hit enter. Let's see, what else do we would put here? I do like Etsy fees when I had Etsy back in the day. Um, right now I have Shopify fees every month. I, I have miscellaneous packaging. I do that one for like shred. So this other expenses is basically everything that you pay out that you are not in turn receiving money for. You're not selling that um, or you're not including it on your sale price of a, an item. So then you save and close and then you are good. I know that's that's a little bit of a of a side sidebar there a little bit because it doesn't really have anything to do with ingredients, but I felt like one, once your receipts be put back up, you don't have to go get those back out again and it's all about this new purchase order. Hopefully this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions, if you have any advice. Oh my gosh, if you have any advice, let us know that too in the comments below. If you like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. 